Big shit, huh. it's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, intelligent, <laughs> beautiful, uh, that one who holds me down, man, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? The official. No, no, no. I'm here. <laughs> hey man, we got a special guest in here today. Uh, she really don't need no introduction. Go check her TikTok out. Right, go check out her what she's done in the city, man. She in Dallas, Texas. Though Luscious Barbie is in the building. Hey, another Dallas, Texas check. Let's hey, go. what part of Dallas? <laughs> Oak Cliff? Uh, nah, I'm not from North Oak Cliff. Dallas. I'm not from North Dallas. You are Los I live in the downtown. I live in the lofts. I no, the you, you ain't part from no damn d- downtown. Uh, you know, Nobody was not born downtown. I wasn't born downtown. Well, what okay? the hell going not, on? I mean, because people are gonna be like, you ain't from Dallas. Where you from? As soon as you drop, where you from? Where you then, from, nigga? Go. Oh my God. I went to the Okay, that's yeah. gonna be the highlight. Right. So you went to the Soto, yeah. man. So we want to go back and uh, just try to understand who Luscious Barbie really is. Oh, you know, man. we want to understand like like before Luscious Barbie. Is that yeah. how you always yeah. see it? You want to understand before that before Luscious Barbie? Yeah, yeah, Barbie. like like yeah. Coming up, yeah. Well, who who were you, man? Coming up, I've always been the person that's been the class clown. I always wanted to entertain, but I've always been about business. I'm talking about candy girl at school. I mean, let's go back every. Though. From back to uh-uh. where? Before I want to know when you come from a single parent home. Oh man, you want to go back? Yeah. Back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's take it back. All right. So, um, growing up, um, I would say that definitely ended up being a single parent home. I came from a, um, you know, it, it started off the perfect family, and then uh, my dad he ended up committing suicide in my front yard mm, um, when I was old? eight years old. Wow. Yeah. So from there, it kind of. Did you ever find out why? Um, yeah, it was just a very, um, uh, it, it got real abusive in my household and my mom is actually writing a book about it and I'm excited about that because it's a lot of stuff that I don't know right. because you I was so young. About, yeah. I, so, I had but, a lot of questions. But then you're grown now and you've never really just turned around and asked your mom these questions. I didn't know what to ask. Um, recently I'm pushing her to write a book. So I actually got her sitting down and she's becoming an author now because I'm like, I got so many questions, but I don't know what to ask. And it's a touchy topic because that was her. Her, her but it's been so many years life. you would yeah. think that she not say got over it but uh-huh. been able to really open, up, to about open up about it right yeah. now I think it was one of those things that not knowing what to open up about because it was one of those things like my whole family felt like I already knew what happened but I'm so young that I don't I don't know all I know is I woke up one day he's in my front yard that's it you know you, you seen you, it? did you see his um, body my mom did um, my mom seen him seen it happen um, I just seen the aftermath. I seen her going to the ambulance. I seen. So you didn't see him laying down? No, 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 no. I seen the blood. I seen everything. But no, she she kept me from that. Right. But, yeah. but what did she say to you? Like when all of that was done, and because you know how anything traumatic happens, mm-hmm. the parent have to come to the child and say, okay, let me sit you down. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to see your dad anymore. Mm-hmm. He's not going to be here. You know, what did she say to you? That part I don't remember. That's why it's one of those you things I don't really out. know. What, yeah, because it's even certain situations that I'll bring up and it'd be like, nah, that's not how that happened. It happened a different way. That wasn't your mom and dad fighting. That was your mom, your dad and your grandma fight. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, whoa. But it's a certain mm-hmm. part, especially like my dad's side of the family. They feel like I already know what's going on. But now I'm figuring out that it you was blocked some it crazy out. stuff. You, you yeah. Oh. Are you the oldest one? No, my brother's the oldest. So, so my brother has a lot more experience. How much older happened. is he? Uh, we're six days and six uh, years apart. Wow. Okay, so he definitely know a lot more. Yeah. And you've never just turned to him. Because he's a sibling compared to your mom. Yeah. Was he in the house at the time? Yeah. So you never really turned to him and asked him? Uh, recently, we've talked about it, but it's more of them things that he'd be like, it's a lot that you don't know. And I'd be like, well, what? Well, then tell tell me. me. And right. I'd be telling my mama, my mom, that's why now when she was reading me like pages of the, of the book that she's writing, I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, what's going on? And, and it's one of them things that my dad was going through a lot of mental issues and, and was telling my mom, but they were they were going through a divorce and, and he had a whole nother family and he oh. shot his girlfriend and it's a whole situation. He shot it. The same day? She, yeah. She killed, so he, did he kill no, her? No, 
No, he didn't. So he shot her, then came over yeah. there. He was coming yeah. to do something to we himself. We don't know or what. You? We don't know. He, he just came been. in the yard and did it. And yeah, he, he told, was standing in the yard. Yeah. And my mama, he was talking to my mama through the window. And she said that once it happened, it was one of them things that you really didn't know what was going to happen in that moment. Was he trying to do anything toward her? Was he arguing her? her? Tell her to get out? No, out. he was actually saying, you got to help me. And that's what I recently right. found out. Because he was, and the way she's telling me the story, and that's why I'm so glad that she's dropping it. Because he was telling her for months, like, man, you help. didn't do nothing. You my best friend. Like, everything I did was wrong. And he was also telling her, like, I don't want to be here no more. And she was reaching out to try to get him help. And nobody was, you know how people, especially in our culture, just like from the South and You're everything. Man. Yeah, Suck he ain't going to do nothing. Right. He, he going to be all right. He good. But he was somebody, uh, uh, what they would say now, a high value man. He had a real estate company. He was an um, engineer in the Air Force, 34 years old. You know what I'm saying? How many so, kids did he have at that time? Um, two. So me and my brother. Okay, you said he had a whole nother family. Yeah. So, so, so I'm like, did he have kids? He had a, old? No, she had kids. Um, and that was his girlfriend, but it cra it's crazy because now and he was with your mom at the same time. Yeah, it was the next door neighbor's sister. <laughs> That's the crazy part about it. it was all the right. next door neighbor's sister? Not that crazy. I yeah. mean, you hear this stuff all the time, and people, you know. Things happen, man. Yeah. And we're not perfect people, and that's the whole game. Like, and we do need counseling. Some of our the things that pass down from our ancestors affect our mental. Right. So we got to stop acting like it's stuff that we we didn't get help for. And then you go to the Air Force or whatever. Who knows? Was he in the military? And he was in. Was he active? Was you know, and stuff like that. All this stuff what, matters, man. What happened? Yeah. You know? and, and and but it's it's I, and I I love the way that. Like, just being from the South, because, like, most of my family is from Arkansas. Like, a lot of my family live in Arkansas, but we spread it all out. But, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like with the older generation, too, it's one of them things, like, I hate the saying what goes on in this house stays in this house. Right. Because it really, now I'm an adult, and I'm really lost on what, like, that part of me. But it really, really doesn't, happened. because when people are arguing, especially if it comes out and they're outside arguing, the whole neighborhood is seeing yeah, it anyway, yeah. so it's really not staying in the house. Yeah. Are, they don't really know the specifics of what's going on, mm -hmm. but, you know, oh, you see that they're arguing over yeah. there, they're, they're fighting. Yeah. It's not really staying in the house. And most of the time, everybody else knows except for the people in the, in house, the house, like the kids, and, and then you get other people in the family that think you already know, and and that that's one of them things that now I'm like, I begged her, hey, write this book, I don't care who get mad. So you never really saw the abuse? Did, he, yeah. did you see him oh, beating yeah. on your mom? Oh, and yeah. all? But he never touched y'all? No. no. Okay. Were you but, a daddy's girl? Yeah, from what I remember. Like I said, I was eight. That's probably why they try to shelter you from a lot of things that I want you to always think of him in a, mm -hmm. in a sort of good light. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I struggled with that for a lot of years where I was just angry because then after that happened, I'm thinking of it like, man. Was like, it your fault? I wasn't, not even that. I thought of it more so of... Like, man, I didn't understand suicide. I didn't understand mental issues. I didn't understand that. So I, I felt like that's selfish. Like, you know, you had kids like you now I've got to see people at, at school and they're going on the father daughter dances. And that's something I'll never experience. How did that affect you Um, with relationships with men for a long time? It was one of the things that, OK, you're going to leave anyway. You know, like you, you're gonna eventually leave, so it really don't matter how this relationship go because wow. the one man in my life literally is never coming back. What's you the did. longest relationship you've had? Um, longest relationship, mm, like three, four years. Did you were you ever abused by any of your boyfriends? No, because that's a trigger for me. Yeah, that's one of them things. If I see any, if you get loud with me, I'm like, oh nah, we gotta go. But yeah. then how some people get fall right back in the same situation that yeah. you know they grew up seeing and they end up. In that same abusive relationship that they saw their mom or dad in, or yeah. sometimes it to, it's totally it opposite. goes opposite. And they, where it, they just right. totally goes away from yeah. what she's doing. Yeah, it's one of them things that it's it's more than a red flag. It's a whole stoplight. It's one of them things that if I see any any form of it, because the type of abuse that I seen in the household was so traumatic, that it's one of them things that. I'm like, nah, I can't. But I did can't. you see your mom heal from it and move on to even oh, having yeah. another relationship? Um, I've seen her in other relationships. She's more of a person now that she is, um, if she was to walk in the room, she's going to light up the whole room. You would never know that she went through anything. Did she have a, uh, uh, any type of... Uh, counseling? No, not just counseling. Because yeah, y'all call it counseling. I call it uh, an encounter with God. God. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so she's a you very know I mean? spiritual woman. So that yeah. that's that 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 you know, I don't really the counseling thing. I think it's overrated. I think you need to be connected to God. Oh yeah, for I, sure. I mean, I don't play with it. Mm-hmm. I, y'all can play with, bounce around the subject of how you can go here, but God is my counselor. Oh, so yeah. I don't, you know, the Holy Spirit and all that stuff is real for me. Yeah. So he so, made a broke her, broken her physically, but he never broke her spiritually. Spirit. Yeah, and and she she said to me uh, recently, and and this is what she's saying in the book is that even after all this happened. I mean, even after everything, she still like her main prayer was that he go to heaven. Like That's it. That, that you know what I'm saying? That the love is just that everything be wiped away. So that that keeps me grounded is how spiritual she is and definitely keeping God the, the highlight of our life in general because seeing somebody come through that, I know God is real. You well, know, you know and, and the thing you gotta understand is to be done went through that, um she's went through a lot and and that 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 what don't kill you make you stronger mm-hmm. or my strength is perfected in weakness as Paul said in first Corinthians. Like this is the thing that we do. We we stretched and pulled to different places to where we can help somebody else. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's the way it go. Oh, so, yeah. go but then, um, okay. Since your brother's older, how did it affect him during school time and all of that? Um, did you see him like, he had a, a rough uh, patch in school just as far as always, fighting um you know getting kicked out of school but he put it into sports he also put it into like wrestling and and ufc and stuff like that so i think more for him it was more of an anger thing because and i can't speak from a man's perspective because mm-hmm. that's a whole different story and because he was older and he saw you know yeah and he's not a person that is um very vocal about that type of stuff. it's one of them things that i remember um when i was younger and i wrote about this day um and i think this is one of them things that it's so touchy for especially my mom with writing on on the fear of with the truth coming out because I remember writing I, I think I might have it might have been like maybe a couple months after my dad passed and I wrote a story about the worst day of my life and I wrote exactly what I remembered from that day and, and this was a school project yeah and he got upset and ripped it up and he was just mad he Your was brother yeah, yeah my brother was so mad so because yeah. he wanted it to stay at home yeah and not get out in the public yes and so one of those and that's why now it's one of those topics that if he brings it up we'll talk about it but it's never been like okay let's sit down and, and, and figure out how this really affected you which i know that it does because yeah. it affects me but it's one of them things that i always remember back to that day and be like uh, the way that he dealt with it yeah, but does he have a relationship with God? Yeah, he does. And that's the thing. I mean, well, then he's still, there's still some cutting and mm-hmm. some pruning that need to be done. Because mm-hmm. when you start to forgive on the next level, you have to let things go. Yeah. And and, and you understand how the importance is of letting things go. And it affects you if you don't. Yeah. So, therefore, if he's still holding on to something, he's still healing in those areas. Mm-hmm. So and he's I can still see adding, that healed all the way up yeah. because in order to heal all the way up you have to be able to totally let things go right in, in a way to where you can help others with the things that have wrapped themselves around you right you know what i mean right that, yeah that, and i can definitely the see the transition over the years and, and him getting older and maturing and being more accepting and more open about you know just just the way that things happen and i learned a lot from him too just across the board in business when it comes to anything street that's the person so that that's that person i'm glad that i do have a brother to be able to step in for that male figure you know and i have my grandfather as well but somebody that's close that i can see okay this is what this is what a man's supposed to do and this is what a man not supposed to do because without that i think for a woman losing her father that's something that a lot of women like you said mm-hmm. they fall back into a situation because now you don't know the difference of what's right and wrong let's just barbie mm-hmm. we never would have thought that you went through all oh that. yeah just looking at you on the outside oh, you yeah. you cover it up very well yeah you yeah. know because at the end of the day we all got stuff that we if we start you don't to, walk around with well, with the scars written yeah, all over yeah, your yeah, face yeah, yeah. no you, you don't you no. don't but at the end of the day we know they're there yeah especially in our our culture and mm-hmm. our people mm-hmm. i just really know i already know when i bump into somebody you hiding something yeah you got something that you're trying to cover up and i wish it was more open i wish i especially with mental illnesses in the family and the mm-hmm. things that don't go on i always said that i wish that what goes on in the house stays in the house i wish that was some type of panel i wish that was something that was open for people because like you said that's the best 
people connect to pain, you know. And a lot of people will look at me and like, oh, you mean you 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 doing this? You got the numbers? You doing this? You don't, you don't deal with anything? And it's like it's days I don't want to leave the house. Like, but it's getting better than what it used to be because that saying was so true back mm-hmm. then. Now, yes, it's somewhat, but not as much because people are more being vocal. Yeah, people are more talking. Especially, I'm gonna always go back to that Me Too movement because mm-hmm. once that started coming out to me more people started talking about issues. Right. Whether first it was that abuse and then now it's more mental health. Right. People are talking about mental health and it takes platforms like this right. that people are coming on to talk about telling their stories and then people on the other end listening to you and, and being like, I need to speak about right. it. Because holding it in causes reactions down the line that, like for your father, yeah. that, you know, it happened terribly, but it, he ended up taking his life because of him holding in, right. you know, situations. Everything. And, and not even just holding, because he was pleading for help, mm-hmm. but people didn't know how to handle it. Yeah. So it's just avenues, because I've heard people come to me and say, hey, you know, um, yes, we have problems, but I don't know where to turn. Mm-hmm. And as much as it's on social media, it's on the news, but they still feel like they don't have it at a rec center down right. the street, not in their area. Right. Not everybody's going to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, hey, I need to talk to such and such. This yeah. hotline is X, Y, Z. Yeah. They want to walk down the street to this rec center or go to the doctor or go to wherever, but they don't feel like it's so yeah. accessible. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a lot of times if people have the resource, what I've noticed is like, it's it's one of those things that, I and I, I've heard this in my own family. I heard this from different people in their family. Like therapy and, and things like that, are really like, well, you ain't going to no therapy. Why are you going? You know, it, it, they make it seem like it's such a negative thing to do especially to sit for down men. and talk to somebody. Well, yeah, especially like, especially for men. Though. That ain't the same as it used to be, guys. For a lot of people. But it's still well, there it's a little changing, bit. It's, it's changing. It's changing. It is changing. It is changing, changing a lot because yeah. people are crutching off of that. It, it's really a cliche of something that's really popular yeah. now where to say it on these platforms where mental illness is a big deal where you people love to say it. It's a yeah. thing that everybody's loving to say. I don't know if they're doing it like they're saying it like I get it you know but they definitely saying it. it's everywhere but the people that have the pain and they speak about it it's for the public it's perfect because people can relate in the comments all that but it's the families that you have to deal with on them being but like the bad thing about the word mental illness which I, I do get and I do I do agree with you in a lot of different ways that people are using as a crutch because everybody goes through mental problems mm-hmm. but they're calling everything mental illness right. which everything you know growing up you think about when somebody said mental illness you crazy yeah. you need medication you need to be at the the Terrell State Hospital or wherever some you know nut right. house get you know help right. but now they're making such a broad umbrella saying that okay you went through your daddy passed. Mm-hmm. So you're suffering from mental illness. Yeah. You need to get help. But it's not even, you just need counseling. Right. There's a difference between mental health where you need, or me- mental illness and mm-hmm. mental health. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Because here, mental illness, you need some medication right. to balance off whatever that's going on in your head that, you know, needs to keep you, you're schizophrenic, you're this, you're that, whatever, mm-hmm. compared to, I went through trauma. I need to know how to deal with this trauma. I need to know how to let it go. I need to talk about it to yeah. somebody. So I need to know how to not be like this person. I need to know how not to carry this baggage into my new relationship that's mm-hmm. coming up. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. There is there there is a difference. It okay. is. Um, let's talk about Luscious Barbie. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about so we 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 we've definitely tackled that enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to talk about your just your experience on who you are for is on uh, your social media platforms, how you are developing your brand um, Mm -hmm. uh, so that people understand what you're doing today so that they can tap into who Luscious Barbie is. Okay. Only, you know, because who Luscious Barbie is uh, as far as on the social media platforms and stuff, the brand that you're pushing is very important for us to get out to the people that watch this channel. And before you answer that, make sure you tell your mom, that before she releases that book, she needs to come on here and um, we'll talk about okay. it. Okay. So that to get our she will you know, love that to get our listeners geared up to go purchase yeah. that book and see what. Because I think all about. now when she's writing it, it's one of those things that she has to relive it, but she has to say it. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't think it's something that she's ever said. Because when she read it to me, I was bawling. I was like, "What do you mean?" Mm-hmm. You know. So it's gonna be really good. But I will tell her that. But let's just Barbie, man. Oh man. 
um, I started uh, my brand Luscious Barbie by doing um, exactly what I've always wanted to do. I run my mouth, wanting to talk all the time. But um, I'm a person that I'm a hustler to the bone. I'm a person I will, every job that I worked at, I would see what somebody had on. I'm coming back on Friday and I'm selling you everything you was wearing through the week. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't really work in a nine to five uh, setting because you can't turn that into your business. I've tried to open boutiques. I've done so many different things. But when I, in 2016, I started Let's Talk Dallas. Um, okay. I was doing internet radio um, at Fishbowl. So I had a show there for about three years. I would interview artists. Um, I wanted to highlight Dallas. The reason why I wanted to highlight Dallas is because every time I would type in on YouTube anything about Dallas, it was always negative. It was always the beef. It was always, but it was people from other cities telling our story. And I'm like, there's an amazing artist in Dallas. There's amazing restaurants. There's a lot of places to go. So I started doing that. And then um, the ratings were good um, sound as far as audio, but I wanted to go more visual. So um, I connected with a friend. I started doing more visual interviews. And then I got into red carpet. I got into where I'm traveling Vegas, South by Southwest every year doing street interviews interviewing everybody that you know and then um i was still working the thing about it was i was still working a nine to five job trying to what were do you doing everything so this uh the most recent job that i was working in 2019 i was doing uh i was working at this company i'm not gonna say their name because i don't like y'all mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but i was working doing? at this company i'm a licensed cosmetologist as well so okay. i was selling um wigs online okay. um and i was selling them mainly to people with cancer and alopecia or high level clients like mm -hmm. um attorneys and and people that are willing to spend seventeen thousand dollars on wigs mm -hmm. um i was really doing well there but the whole time i'm at this job i used to watch ted talks every day on how to quit my job like every day i mean faithfully i will go to work i will watch uh breakfast club in the morning when I sit down at my desk, do some emails, and I would listen to TED Talks all day. Just the motivation of just letting go of the guaranteed money. It was the money that I was addicted to because I would make money on the side. It was good money. I would make money in commission. I was always into sales. The money was like, I can't let this go because then how am I going to pay my bills, right? But I would always tell people, go for your passion, quit your job. But, but you I would never let what go, you were right? Talking about and so that. that was miserable to me because now I'm in a box. I'm, I'm seeing other people branch off and do what they're they're taking my advice but now I'm stuck on a paycheck right so then one day I wake up uh, I get a call from this job and they say um you know this is just not working out I'm like what's so they, not they firing what's you what's not working out girl you got a relationship problem let's talk about it like wait I'm here for the tea she was like no we love you you know your personality stands out we we just feel like we're in your way I'm like blew me away I'm on my way to work I'm like, in my way? Like, what? Like, what? what, what? Hold on, wait. I'm you must be good friends with them for them to even say that. She just, she was like, I said, am I getting fired over the phone? Because now I'm confused. Am I getting fired over the phone? She said, uh, we just wanted to save you the gas. Mm. <laughs> okay, appreciate that. But I'm ready to flip over some tables at this point because I'm preparing to quit. I'm not preparing to get fired. Like, mm -hmm. but I manifested that I had I had put that in my life. Like God really knew that I was not going to get up and leave that job ever. I literally would be still there if they wouldn't have fired me. So um luckily I'm a person that whenever I'm out, if I if I go drink or do anything, I come back home and I do vision boards. So I go back home and I'm sitting there and I'm really lost because now I'm praying. I'm like, please come come to me. What what will I do now? I looked at my vision board and said, Go to LA, go network, your life depends on it. So I'm like, okay, who do I know in L.A.? I hit up my cousin, knew one cousin out there, one auntie out there. I haven't seen this on my dad's side. I haven't seen them since I was like six. But I'm like, hey, can I come visit L.A.? They say, yeah, come on. It's crazy how things start happening. It was blessings coming right after that because right after I got fired, somebody that had scammed me and I didn't even know a girl that I lived with in like 2015 for like a week. She put the gas bill in my name. And somehow the city of Dallas sent me a check for $2,000 and, and out of nowhere in 2019. And, and the girl called me and was like, hey, it's a check from the city of Dallas. I don't know what it is, but just come pick it up. I went and picked it up. I used that and went and visited L.A. I went out there and they was just like, oh, man, come out here. You know, oh, you're going to love here. You can live your dreams. You want to be in front of the camera. You want to be an actress. So, of course, I come back here, pack up my stuff. Within two weeks, I moved to L.A. Not knowing nobody. I Tried to live with my with my family. That didn't work out. I ended up moving with some strangers that I met on a set of Insecure. Mm. And it's crazy because 
it positioned me to where I am now. And that's why this is an important part of the story. Because while I was out there, I had no agent. I used the app backstage. I literally was How driving. did you get on the set? Because it was an app called Backstage, and I would just network. Everywhere I would go, I was networking with people. People, The jobs that people didn't want, like sitting in the audience clapping, they get paid $50 an hour. I'm there every day. This mm -hmm. I'm driving an hour and 30 minutes to go make $50, and you don't get the check for two weeks. I'm out there in a the truck. Gas is $4.50. Mm -hmm. So I'm losing. I'm taking all type of losses, but I, I had the access to go to the beach. I would go to the beach and just write. I would just I would just map it out, right? I met people. I, one of my best friends, Gerard Brochon, shout out to him. He was a person that took me to the mansion parties. And he, he's he been signed to the labels. He was a part of recognition. So he had a circle. He introduced me to so many different people. But I would go set to set. But what that did for me, and I didn't even know it is, the people that was wouldn't share my videos, Let's Talk Dallas, wouldn't listen to my, my podcast, wouldn't come on a radio show, couldn't interview all these artists. Now they seeing me. Is, is that Luscious on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood behind Marcus Houston? Is she in another episode? Every time people sending me, tagging me. Then they see me on MTV Crack uh, Me Up with all of the cast of Wild and Out. Then they start seeing me on Insecure. They start seeing me. I did Let's Make a Deal. Did a pilot for I Can See Your Voice on So Fox. you are behind the scenes on all of those. You, you didn't all really get, never get like a um, yeah, leading role? I did. Um, and What hasn't aired yet is... I can see your voice on Fox. I did a whole episode. I was the gospel goddess and that's um, with Charlamagne and God and, and Robin. When is Dick. that coming out? I don't know. They okay. in LA, they really just pay you and like, Hey, figure it out. If it come on, you catch it. If not, um, I did, um, a show uh, on E Network, uh, Fashion Emergency. They're bringing that show back. I don't know when they're gonna drop it, but I did a whole episode of that, so I'm excited to see that. They took me from like a street interviewer to on a news reporter. Okay. Um, so they transformed me and made me look like a news reporter. Uh, so that was fun. But um, all this happens, and then the pandemic comes, mm -hmm. and I'm like, mm, I don't know LA like that, like that, like this is not. But what it did for me in Dallas is the respect level changed because mm -hmm. now people see that you actually went for it. You actually took your own advice. Now I'm seeing you, you making your moves. Resume. Yeah, they like, you got an agent? I'm like, no, no agent. I just went out there and grind. But in LA, I was such a breath of fresh air. I would hear that all the time. I walked into, people would hit me up on Instagram. Hey, can you go do interviews at the ESPY Awards? What is that? I didn't even know what the ESPY Awards was. I'm used to doing South by Southwest. I don't know mm -hmm, what that is. Mm -hmm. I get in the room and all I had is my phone and my and my selfie stick. And I'm I'm so, like how you said when we before it came on, making yourself uncomfortable because I was like, okay, how am I going to make this work? Because they, it's Darius McRae, Abatoon Day, it's Amon Joseph when Snowfall just dropped. And um, I go in there and I'm, hey, y'all good? Y'all had a drink? It's some edibles back there? Y'all y'all straight? Everybody good? And they're like, who are you? Because you're not from L.A. That's it. So where, where is this hospitality coming from? People don't even speak in that's, L.A. That's, I get that all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, y'all, I got a hot seat back here. I'm going to be asking y'all, what's your porn name? I'm going to be asking y'all kind of crazy questions. It was a line of celebrities that I had always watched and seen. They lined up to find out who I am. Wow, that's God. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of them things that I was like, okay, you got it. And then every time I would be on set, I would be talking to the directors. I'm talking to the cameraman. I'm getting that number. And people be like, ooh, you ain't supposed to do that. That's against the code. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I'd be Merry Christmas, Hallelujah right. in the family. And I would get more opportunities. Building relationships. Yeah, I did a play. But um, they don't want you to do that. They don't want you to do that yeah, at that's all. That's against policy. They're yeah. like, you can get blackballed. I'm like, well, I mean. I'm going to get blackballed. Well, I'm going to be me. <laughs> blackball me and at least they'll know my name. I mean, that's that's really it. And I, um, how I start doing comedy, I start doing comedy by when um, they would ask, anybody in the audience can sing. And I would be like, me. I get up there. Once I get the mic, the mic is my comfort zone. So you can sing? No, not at all. But she just <laughs> make them think. She when I sing. get the mic, <laughs> now the audience, because I'm on the set of um, Neighborhood and Tashina Arnold is behind me and Cedric Entertainer, that's my audience. The audience that I'm standing in front of, that's who's hearing me, but I know they can hear too. So I would be like, my name is Luscious. Y'all say, hey, Luscious. Everybody in the audience, hey, Luscious. Now, I know they hear me, right? So I would be like, okay, the house on the left is red. The house on the right is blue. Where's the White House? If y'all get it right, then I, I would tell the, the audience warm-up comedian, if you get it wrong, everybody get some candy because I know everybody's complaining about they hungry. He would get it wrong, everybody get candy. Now wow. they, go Luscious, go Luscious, you know? <laughs> the, every, every time I did that, the next time I came, 
I said something else. And Cedric and Tony was like, Luscious, what the hell are you talking about today? And I was like, they hear it. That's it. So then I got a, went from a 50, $57 day to the next uh, one of the producers reached out and said, well, hey, how about you do a background position? That changed my day from driving an hour and 30 minutes for $57 to now it's a $300 day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that that changed it. And from there, I did plays. I did all of that. But when the pandemic happened, it's another obstacle that I'm like, man, okay, I got to go back home. Mm -hmm. I got to go where I know. When I get back here, um, I, I really didn't know what I was going to do at that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of just like, oh, man, well, now I'm back at square one. I done quit my job. Now I, I don't want to go back to work. I didn't realize how to hustle without the guaranteed money. So how did you overcome the pandemic? Oh, man, once I got back here, um, my nieces started showing me TikToks. And I'm like, I don't know how to do no TikTok. My, I got my first TikTok video still up. I'm doing the renegade dance. I'm really trying to figure it out. Can't do, <laughs> can't do no dance. That's it. But then I did a video of uh, my first video of another Dallas, Texas check, which is another Dallas, Texas check. What I do now is Let's Talk Dallas. I've okay. been working on it since 2016. Right. It's never changed. The formula is the same. I changed the name and I made it more trendy. And I did the first video of just, you know how before I, I was trying to be professional and I wanted people to come come in and do the right type of interviews and I wanted to have the questions and all of that but I did a uh, Sweet George Brown and I said uh, if you pull up at your barbecue place and it's not potholes in the parking lot I don't want it if it's not grease splattering all over the back of the building I don't want it I don't want to go in there if you can't say um and they say we ain't got that you know mm -hmm. and when I did that it went crazy so that made me understand that sticking to the original formula is what I really needed to do all along Mm -hmm. And then I just went from there. Every video, every place I would go eat, every place I would go do, I would do a review. And now, I mean, I created that hashtag, Another Dollar Sex Check. It's at 7.1 million views now. Awesome. Um, the, the followers are organic. Everywhere I go, people stop me. I've brought so many businesses through the pandemic because a lot of the business owners would tell me, man, we were about to close. We didn't know what we was going to do. And you did a video and people start coming in here. Wow. People start getting the food. They start telling. And that's how I started it. While people, would, I would make the people say, Luscious sent you. So when I go and I talk to the business owner, now they like, so you Luscious. Uh -huh. Now I turn my whole platform into an advertising agency. And Do it's you been get up free food there. everywhere you go? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, this week I've gotten so, my refrigerator is so many to-go boxes. I can't eat all that food. And yeah. my body is telling me now, like, girl, you keep on. You, you. Yeah, but you're well, doing you, the right thing helping yeah. people for yeah. sure. For sure. Take some of that food and go hit them the streets. Oh, yeah. Start, you know what? Here. Yeah. Um, tell them exactly I where you got it it'll from. Bless you. you know, whatever. Yeah. It'll bless you. Yeah. When I have it, it in the car, I, everybody that I see on the street, I, I'll give it to them. But I do need to. I want to put together a whole. Because it's so much food that restaurants get rid of. Get rid of. That it's like they just really need that person they need to, it. to just come in and say, hey, I'll take it to them. Yeah. Like, like what time do you close? What yeah. Time, I'll come get cases. If you don't want to give me the containers, I'll go buy the containers. You just put them in it because right. nobody wants to just give away their containers. They need it for their right. business. Right. You know, buy some containers and that could be a nonprofit yeah. and be like, hey, put the food in here and I'll take it and go dish oh, it yeah. out. Yeah. Let me ask you something. What's the most uncomfortable situation that happened when you was up in L.A. with a celebrity that made you feel like, dang, I messed that up or man, I killed that. Um, yeah. Either way, I don't care. With a celebrity... Um, I would say, uh, does directors count? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say being on set and being a black plus size woman was the most uncomfortable situation on any set that I worked on. But I mastered it because just being my authentic self and knowing how to not be afraid of missing opportunities. Because if I'm on set and they're saying, well, can you make it more urban? Like, can you say, oh, I'm like, well, why would I say that? Yeah. That's the Cardi B thing. Why would I say that? Well, can you be more like Lizzo? Can you be more confident like Lizzo? I'm very confident. You know, like, I, Lizzo, you want me to get naked? What are you, like, what are you saying? So those situations were so uncomfortable, but me voicing it, and that's what a lot of people are scared of, the voice, because you're going to lose the dollar. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to happen. They're going to be like, well, I mean, if you don't do it, there's that, millions of other people exactly, that will. Exactly, that okay. industry does that. And that, uh, that opportunity so you, is not for me. How do you feel about Monique and the way that she... That's exactly who I was thinking she, about. Um, the way that she spoke responded, out. spoke out, uh, the way that she took on everything that she had to deal with in... Yeah that limelight yeah i think it was the way that she did it um and and the weight 
because if you've been and and that's with influence in, in anything if you've been accepting something for so long and not saying anything about it it boils up once you say something about it that's going to be the main question well why are you waiting to now and that's that's with everything with the me too with everything well why now why now and it's like it's never a great time to say how you feel mm -hmm. but i think that's why it was so much backlash about it mm -hmm. is because it's like well if you if this is going on now that you you've already reaped all the benefits from it now you have to be willing to walk away from that money and the benefits that that come with it it depends i think if it if you're the first one who comes out mm -hmm. with it then they're gonna jump on you even more mm -hmm. but if someone came out with it before you and then you came out it's like the me too movement and yeah. people came out afterwards they're like well i i built up the courage because of this person yeah, yeah. you know what i it mean make it easier yeah right well let me know how people can get a hold of you like if, if they're trying to get uh get you to advertise for them or how can, what's the best way on Instagram or any platform that he can get hold of Instagram you can contact me at Sweet Life for Luscious TikTok Sweet Life for Luscious www.anotherdollarsexualcheck.com um, you can catch me there click the link in the bio on any of my social medias I have a form there ready for you and just go in detail on what you need as far as promotion I do all businesses it just does not have to be just food I've done restaurants, salons. Um, I also do social media marketing. So if you need your page or anything done like that, I do tutorials where I teach businesses how to work the TikTok platform um, within your niche. So I kind of go in and do the whole brainstorming. But the best way to contact is Instagram or TikTok. Um, yeah. Um, also, I know you link with uh, Ricky Booker. Oh, um, yeah. Just, shout out uh, to Ricky Booker. Shout out, I wanted to shout him out and just... Uh, the, um, what what has that how have you helped his situation or dealt with his situation in restaurant Man, just that production scene that relationship built from me doing a TikTok and it bringing a lot of business and then he actually seen that I was not just about the talk I was about the business too and from there it went from TikTok after TikTok so to now I'm one of the writers a producer of the TV show In the Kitchen with the Breakfast Brothers I'm also the announcer of the show um, I'm the, the basically the field agent in the restaurant so uh, now our relationship is very close I definitely appreciate everything that he's done because he understood and seen the vision and actually believed in me and that's one of those things that I feel like everything is about a cosign of course you're gonna be cosigned by god all the time but in a lot of places it all it takes is that one person to actually believe in and that and he is that one person well he sure enough got some good uh, uh what was them waffles them little old red oh, velvet, velvet chicken and waffles oh my god. god i love that one because we tried both but i red velvet I'm not red fact, velvet. I'm, i might go over there the hell tomorrow have morning. you tried the fried rice mm. uh, no mm -hmm. i had some catfish fried rice the other day Mm. The but rice is amazing. I went to Benihana and got mad because it didn't taste like breakfast. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm, about to, I'm about to go back. I might go tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got the catfish I'm fried a, rice. He gonna be there tomorrow? Yeah, you think? call him. I, yeah, well, I'll, I'll let him know. Call, call him. him. Oh, yeah, yeah, make sure up. you pull up. Yeah. yeah, I'm coming through that. You gotta thing. go earlier than the church crowd. So yeah, I know. So we gotta get over there. Man. If you call him, you'll be good. He gonna, yeah, yeah, he gonna take care of me. Definitely try that. Try the. Have you tried the grilled peanut butter, the fried peanut butter sandwich? Uh uh. I think did I peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, I did. I didn't mm. like You it. didn't like the peanut butter and jelly? It's, it's, it tastes, you, you have to pair it lamb. with so many I different things. Lamb chops. Lamb chops yeah. out there. Yeah. Well, them things were good. Lamb, lamb chops is good. Man, let's get off this, man. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm hungry as hell right now, man. Y'all <laughs> niggas wrong for that. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming thank on Boss Talk, man. Thank you for having me. Is there anything that we left out, anything we missed, or anything you want to highlight before oh. you get off this show? Shout out. Is somebody you want to beef with? Dallas, y'all look out. Luscious Barbie got something to say. Oh, yeah. Another Dallas Texas check, y'all. I just want y'all to know that I'm the original, the creator, all of that. It's my full-time business. Um, I have all of my paperwork done on another Dallas Texas check, so y'all can keep using it if you want to. You can switch it up. You can imitate it. You can do whatever you want to, but baby, just know it's another Dallas Texas check. Let's go. Hey, man, we love you. God loves you, man. Loves Thank you Barbie. so much. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Oh, Holla yeah. at your boy. It's a unique hustle. It's going down. And we and are we out. Oh, okay.